Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Valence Let's Play Board Game Edition Preview Review. Now, I have to say Valence on its own is probably an okay game, but I have to th say as an educational tool, it is excellent. The uh, concepts that are covered in this, most students don't learn until maybe late high school, um, but this game puts them in, a, in terms that maybe an eight-year-old could understand. Uh, it teaches molecule building through color-coded atom cards and simple addition. Um, there is also a lot of other information on the cards that could be really useful and adds a lot more knowledge to it. But so it's good for all ranges. You can either start simple or you can incorporate some of the other information and it'll be better with older kids. A couple of examples of this extra information is can be seen on the atom cards. Um, you'll notice in the right hand top corner uh, there are actually the valence shells of each of the atoms car atom yeah each of the atoms. Um, you'll notice that they're actually they have marked off where the empty uh, electron level is on the negative atoms and they actually have the extra electron marked off on the positive atoms so that's really cool. Also on the back of the cards there's a ton of information including all the different um, atom combinations that can be used to make the molecule in the game as well as a little bit of extra paragraph teaching you about the molecule itself and which is pretty cool. I am a little sad that the information is on the back of the card uh, because when in gameplay, you really there's no point in flipping over the card other than to check to make sure the atom is correct. So most of the time, this information could get missed easily. Um, but if you're in the classroom setting, you could f like require them to flip over the first time and maybe read the back of the card, and that would pass the information that way, and that would work really well. Um, I do also have to agree that with them not putting it on the front of the card. The cards are beautiful, and it really would make the front of the card too busy to put that information on it. Um, the artwork, I have to say, in this game is really pretty amazing. I really like it. I do think, though, I'm missing something. Um, I admit I've read maybe a handful of the Science Ninja comics. I have, I've heard of the characters to an extent, but I think a classroom using these characters to teach uh, would actually have a lot more meaning. I do think a game that is tying them into characters they already know and love would make them enjoy the game more and make it a more effective teaching tool. Um, the gameplay time actually works really well. I'd say probably with a maximum of five players takes maybe about 25 minutes. So you could probably get in, definitely get in one game, maybe two with that players in a 45 minute period, which I, I know the middle schools around here do. I don't know how long your schools are, but it works much better with block scheduling, I'll admit. Block scheduling, when you have an hour and a half, you could play half an hour of a game and as a treat at the end of class, and they're learning while they're playing game, and that would be a lot of fun. As a game, Valence is decent. Um, it's not very heavy on strategy or planning. It's actually extremely luck-based. Uh, there is a small amount, a very small amount of deciding whether you build the common molecules quickly or you try to save up for the less common molecules, but I mean, it really depends on what you draw, so there's not a whole lot you can do there. Um, what I do like is that there are a bunch of different four point cards. There's the bases, which are the easiest to make, but they're also the most vulnerable to attack because acids are fairly common. They are really easy to build. They're common in the cards to make them are common in the deck. They're the common, uh, you get them from some of the other attack cards. So the base is very vulnerable. It's the easiest to get, but it's also the most vulnerable. On the other hand, the halo carbons are almost impossible to build and they're not vulnerable to attack at all. Um, the base takes maybe usually about three cards to build. The halo carbon builds five, but for your investment of five cards, it's not able to be attacked. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, another thing I really like about the game is that you can attack a player and still get a benefit um, if a player has no cards in hand. That is not true with a lot of games, like even Settlers. If the person has no cards in hand, you get nothing. Here, you at least get a random card from the deck, which isn't as good as stealing a card, obviously, but because the game really puts such an incentive on going down to zero cards at hand at the end of your turn, um, I'm glad that they have some kind of incentive to attack the player because you really, you don't want to be 
forced to not attack the person in the lead. It's a very quick game. If you don't attack the person, they could very easily win the next turn. So I'm glad that there is still incentive to attack the leading player, even if they have no cards on hand. Um, overall, I would not recommend this game for the hardcore gamers. Uh, it's not a gamer game, but educational-wise, it's a great tool for schools. I highly recommend it for classrooms, for science classes, um, and I think it would be, be a big bonus for incorporating this into your curriculum. Well, that's all for the Valence Let's Play Board Game Edition preview review. I hope to see you in our playthrough video, but if not, please remember to share, like, and subscribe, and as always, remember to stay geeky.